Earning $100,000 a year as a lawn care business owner in your first year, does that sound interesting to you? It does to me. A 19-year-old from Whatcom County is gonna show us how he did it. Trust me, this is a must watch. How much money were you working with? What did you start with? In this episode, we're gonna learn about the mastermind who started this business, how he grew his client base from 20 to 300 people, how he's retained them through relationship building, and what's even more impressive, you guys, is doing all that in his first year in business. So on an average, I'll do between 500 to up to $6,000 a day. That's a ton of money. An average lawn care business in the first year makes somewhere between $5,000 and half a million dollars. And that's only if they're in a small percentage of businesses that don't fail in the first 18 months. So I have about a 50% profit margin. If there was one thing you wished you'd knew before you got into the business, what would it be? How did this teenager do it? Overcome all expectation, all odds, and make it happen in the first year. We're gonna hear all about it, ask him all these questions. This episode's for anyone who's looking to start a landscaping service business, and not only. So please, subscribe to our channel, like this video, hit that bell so you don't miss any videos from Upflip. And it's time to go meet this mastermind. Let's go meet Russell. Russell, it's good to be here with you. Yeah. Uh, in a couple minutes, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you started the lawn care business, and maybe why. So I started this lawn care business senior year of my high school. Uh, I worked for a previous landscape company two years before I started this one. And I decided just it's time for me to branch out on my own, become an entrepreneur. So I've scaled this business up from a truck and a lawnmower up to what you see here, multiple trucks, yeah, new trailers, quite a bit of equipment. multiple pieces of equipment here. So it's been very successful for me. That is cool. So you got into this pre high school graduation. Correct. Wow. Why? I mean, what, what got you into this particular business out of all the things you could have done? So ever since I was a little kid, I'd always be like your typical startup story, a person while I'm around my neighborhood and stuff. And so I was like, uh, this is, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do senior year. So I obviously didn't want to go to college because college isn't for me. I don't like racking up a bunch of debt and then trying to pay it off later, hopefully getting a job after high school or mm -hmm. after college. That's awesome. So at this point today, how long has it been already since you've been in this business? I've been in the business total seven years, but this business seven. year and a half. And how old are you? 19. Is that a question I can ask? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Let's talk about your budget. When you first started your, your company, your mm -hmm. business, how much money were you working with? What did you start with? So I started about $2,000. So you had 2000 bucks that's, to that's start. All, that's, that's all I had to my name, pretty much. And to start a business that's now you know, putting you in the six digits per year oh, yeah. uh, with $2,000, you guys, that's amazing. It is. Um, and you mentioned equipment wise, 2,000 bucks. How did you spend that? Can you break it down to us? So I bought like a $200 blower and a $150 okay. weeder and the rest of it, I just blower wanted to keep weeder. it as, much just as reserves, the rest of it. So you, you started everything with just- Less than $1,000, let's say. Less yeah. than 1,000 bucks yeah. and then a couple pieces of equipment. Yeah. Uh, any advice for our viewers who are in the same boat? Maybe they're even younger than, than you. Uh, where do they start? Just, maybe they don't have 2000 bucks and they're thinking, well, great for you, Russell, but we don't. So how do they overcome that? Just start. Because if, if you don't if you don't start, even if you have like a broom and a weed eater, you could start somewhere. Or if you have, you could just go sell a job, say, okay, I want to trim your bushes for say $500. Say, okay, I need 50% down. So you have $250, then you can go spend that say 200 of that mm, to my head trimmer right. and a broom. So they or give you money up front so that you can go do the job for already. That's amazing because a lot of people sort of stop and don't do nothing based on the excuse I don't have any money. Yeah. What you're saying is if you have a broom yeah. and a, and something else, start with that. Yeah. And, and Or if you, if you have no money, if you go sell a job and get 50% right. down on that job, you could go and start your equipment with that. There's never an excuse, there's always a way around stuff. Yeah. What about profit-wise? What's a good day for you, and uh, what's a bad day dollar-wise as far as potential income that you're bringing in? So I have about a 50% profit margin for overhead and stuff That's like that. That's pretty good. So on an average, I'll do between 500 to up to $6,000 a day, depending on what job I'm doing. Gotcha, $6,000 a day. That's that's a ton of money if you can keep that consistently, even if you average that out to a couple grand a day. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with a 50% margin. Man, mm -hmm. that's, that's incredible. So in your world, uh, you've got a lot of tools Correct. that you yeah. use. Uh, can you walk me through or show us a couple pieces of equipment that sure. add, add value to your business and yeah, what you sure, do? absolutely. Let's go take a look over here. Yeah, let's check this one out. Equipment. Kubota. Am I, Kubota. Am I reading that right? Or Kubota? Kubota. 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 Okay. Yeah, so I just got this earlier in the year. It's school and equipment. That's where I buy all my Kubota equipment, a lot of my bigger pieces of equipment. So they had a good deal for 0% financing, which I can't pass down. Nice. You can't like you can that, never so. pass down 0%. Yeah, so I got tractor package and I got a nice tilt deck trailer with that. Gotcha. Would you say these are kind of the most important right now? Cause Absolutely. Because especially now I'm going into a lot of dirt work and a lot of construction, they definitely come handy a lot during the week. Right, what does this guy do? So it's a industrial brush cutter, so I can mow fields, mow down large areas of brush and stuff. Pretty easy to connect to the back of this truck tractor? Oh yeah, and I got set up pallet forks, I can pick up big pallets of stone or large trees. And then you got a box scraper for the back, so I can do grading work and regrade driveways. These are pretty cool toys, they're like transformers. You got a bunch of parts you can add to it and, of and then do different things pretty much, right? Oh yeah. How did you establish those first relationships, those first customers? Is there a particular process you followed or friends, family? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I think it's important to know. So when I first started, I got my first, let's say, couple of dozen customers. I provide, I try to provide as much value as I can mm -hmm. to my customers. So I let the work I do show how the value that they're getting out of their money. But it's if, if somebody you don't know, they don't know you, there's no relationship. Um, anything specific you could share on how to establish that for people? Well, I'd say it's just try to educate them as much as you can on their project. So if it's like, for example, just try to trim up a shrub tr properly. Mm -hmm. So you tell them, hey, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm not just gonna hack it. I know, I know. <laughs> I've I'm, seen people do that. I, I'm, chop, I'm, chop. I'm highly trained Done. in how to my do check? It, stuff like that. Oh yeah, especially now I'm trying to go to more dirt work kind of stuff. You need to have, you need to create a lot of confidence if your customer that, oh yeah, this is how the process is gonna work. This is the results you're gonna kind of get. Mm -hmm. So they're not kind of in the dark about a lot of stuff. They're very comfortable with what you're about to do to their property. So you're speaking intelligently. The customer Correct. who you're establishing a rapport with. Correct. Here's, you know what you're talking about. Correct, you try to educate them as much as you can right. on their project. That's pretty cool. If a customer calls and asks for an estimate, uh, what does that process look like uh, within your company? Do you charge an hourly? Do you charge for estimates? So I provide pre-estimates to everything. So it doesn't matter if it's a six thousand dollar job or a hundred dollar job. It's the same. Get the same service. So my customer calls me. They'll get usually within twenty four hours. They'll get an estimate. It'll be, it'll be an in person estimate, mm -hmm. and then they'll have an in, uh, emailed it estimate into their email within 24 hours. Do your competitors maybe charge estimates and, and you don't? And, and was there a reason for that? So most companies, I believe, do all free estimates. I believe when okay. you get to the larger items, like when most construction companies will probably charge $50 fee you to do, especially if design work. Right. A lot of it, they'll probably charge a fee because they're taking time and actually giving you a product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So free estimates. I mean, that, that sounds pretty good, even though I could imagine that takes your time and you could be estimating for three days in a row with Correct. no income coming in. Correct. Like when I first started, it was very hard to do estimates because you, you want to get that job every single time. Right. Now I turn down more work than I get. Because hmm. I, uh, but even when just when people call me, I qualify them over the phone, say, okay, where are you located here in the county? So, because I only service north of the county, so anything further or above. I don't bother going down to Bellingham because that's too far because I want to try to keep my service area very small. So my route density is very tight. So instead of going from here to across town, mm -hmm. it's very house to house. Right. Russell, what about if there's one thing you wished you knew before you got into the business, what would it be based on your experience now in seven years? I'd say just keep reinvesting in the business because a lot of people when they start, they see, oh yeah, I've replaced my income from my nine to five. Mm -hmm. What I make now, but what people don't consider is that nine to five was net pay, it wasn't gross pay. You still have to pay your taxes, your fuel, your overhead that too so continually reinvesting in your business because that's how i've grown mine so fast is because i haven't i've taken zero of a paycheck in the last two years wow as well. i keep reinvesting into more equipment because the more assets you buy instead of liabilities right a question i have for you guys if you started a company and you thought okay who do i go where do i find my customer please share a story below if you ended up 
working with someone who was the closest person to you. You were surprised. I, I think that would be a pretty cool thing to hear, you know? Absolutely. Uh, who was your first customer? How you acquired them? We'd love for you to engage us. Comment below. It'd be fun, fun to hear. Um, let's talk about your profit margins. What does that look like in this business in general? And then what does that look like for you and your business as well? So I'd say for most companies between, I'd say six figures up to 200,000, I'd say it's about 50, 60%, I'd say. So most, if, you, if you're not reaching that, you're doing something wrong. You're not charging enough or you're not estimating enough. That's a pretty good margin as right. far as business. I mean, yes. 50, 60%. I'd say so, because that's why I want to try to stay small is because that's when you have the best profit margin. Because when you get bigger, bigger, like most million dollar, $2 million plus companies, they have about uh, temper between 10 to 14% profit margin. Really? Correct. That's a huge drop. Because they have all that overhead. They have all their employees overhead. They have their space overhead. Correct me, I'm the only employee. Mm -hmm. uh, any material I have, that's pretty much my only overhead. So it'd be gas, fuel, repairs. That's all the overhead I have. Wow. Yeah, to go from 50 to 60% margin as a smaller, more hyper-focused business owner to bigger and see Correct. that huge drop. Correct. Um, that's why bigger that's... sometimes isn't always better. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes bigger isn't always better as far as growth and potential. I hope you enjoyed this first part of us interviewing uh, Russell from Legends Lawn Care Services. A couple things that really stand out is staying small, having a big profit margin, uh, focusing on your neighborhood. I mean, he lives right there and he's got six, five customers right next to him. So I hope you guys are taking out some great things from this video. Uh, this is part one. Make sure you come back and watch part two. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. Uh, we appreciate you interacting with the channel, leaving comments, hitting that bell so that you don't miss any videos. YouTube rewards us for that and we appreciate you. We've got amazing content coming up.